Hello and welcome everybody to my new video about Scorpio season, the new moon in Scorpio and the full moon in Taurus. I'm Verena, Verena Borel, I'm living in Austria and I work with evolutionary astrology, intuitive guidance and I'm also a student of somatic experiencing. I'm doing my three year long professional training with somatic experiencing international because for me astrology is really a lived experience and in my work in my offers I want to connect soul and soma astrology and the body more and more so let's dive in into this very intense time Scorpio time is always intense I guess but I think it is worth to mention that this is the last Scorpio time, Scorpio season that we all will experience with Pluto, the ruler of Scorpio in Capricorn. And we actually start with talking a little bit about Pluto, um, Pluto in Capricorn um, during Scorpio season. So Pluto will move out of Capricorn and finally into Aquarius on November 19th. So um, please be aware that all of the dates and times that I'm, yeah, that I'm mentioning are central, central European times. So if you live in the US, I invite you to convert it to your time zone. Um, but yeah, Pluto will move into Aquarius on November 19th and they are currently in Capricorn. And if you follow astrology and if you follow my YouTube channel, you know that, um, or if you follow um, other astrologers, you know that Pluto um, has this in and out, um, the stance between Capricorn and Aquarius since almost two years. So Pluto went into Aquarius last year in 2023 for the first time and then he moved back into Capricorn and all of these regress, ingress. Um, and now Pluto moved um, for their last time for the next 250 years um, into Capricorn. And so we have now Scorpio season with Scorpio ruler Pluto in Capricorn for the last time for the next 250 years. Um, so not in this lifetime. Um, we will experience this not in this lifetime again. And I think that um, what I see and what I experience and what I feel in the field is really that um, since Pluto moved back into Capricorn um, and now there is a lot of old patterns and old topics showing up again. And it feels like I already talked about that in my last video about Libra season. It really feels like, okay, these old patterns really want to come to the surface again in order to be purged and cleared away finally. So that we can really see what we do no longer want to live and to experience and to hold on to. And we did so much work with Pluto and Capricorn, literally work in Capricorn. It's also about work um, since Pluto went into Capricorn in 2008. And I think that there are many, um, Capricorn is a yin and earth sign. So it's very much about finding natural ways to be productive, natural ways to achieve in the world what our soul wants to achieve here and build a legacy and um, yeah, really master the element of earth, master the conditions here of planet earth. But um, with Pluto in Capricorn, we have been showed many of the destructive sides of Capricorn, many of the shadow sides of Capricorn, which are um, performance society, the pressure to perform, um, hierarchy, hierarchy, oppressive systems, um, everything where we are not acting in alignment with nature, but against it, 
every everything where we are not, which would be the original essence of Capricorn, um, preserving resources, but really exploiting resources, including our own body. So this shall not be a video about Pluto and Capricorn. I think we have talked about that a lot. Um, but what I will show you or what I will give you a, a little hint to is that maybe these old patterns in regard to your work or in regard to which rules you which which ru rules you are following um, internal rules but also external rules may show up again and you maybe feel like okay I have done so much work around that I have healed so much why is that showing up again and I just say please be patient and be kind with yourself and others because I experience it really like okay these topics want to be looked at in order to be finally finally released and also you might feel this um, not pressure to perform but the pressure to transform and I really feel that so that and and I really I don't want to pressure you but there is the pressure is real because it is the last degree of Capricorn the last weeks with Pluto and Capricorn now is the time to look at these things to heal them or to to deal with them in a in a in a better way or, or to become aware of them so that we can really move on and I hope, and this is my hope, that when Pluto will move into Aquarius, that it's a lot easier to free yourself from these things. So don't worry, just become aware what is happening right now, what you don't do not long, don't, um, what you don't want to live any longer. Um, because I think when Pluto then moves into Aquarius and then also the sun will be in Sagittarius, I think there is more opportunity to really free yourself and liberate yourself. Um, and also you might feel this pressure to transform and to make a change. And when you feel that, maybe you are one of these change makers. Maybe you are one of these spiritual rebels or light workers or healers or yeah, revolutionaries of the soul who feel called to make a change in their own life and in the world. And my spiritual guides really um, give me these sentences that the time for change is now. And I receive these messages that it is so, so important that we really make changes in regard to our own life because big changes always start with the individual, that we do our healing work, that we really look and see and witness what fears show up again and what wants to be healed, so that we, on a personal level, expand our consciousness, um, really expand, not just rise, but deepen and expand in all directions our consciousness it's not about leaving our body it's about getting into contact with what fears are maybe stuck in our system and really gain more consciousness about all of our patterns and behaviors um, so that we can live in a more conscious way and that we can make changes and that we can more and more decide consciously how we want to live and are not so much um, controlled by subconscious patterns. So one thing that you might be, maybe want to ask yourself is um, during Scorpio time and Scorpio season and around the new moon in Scorpio, what old versions of yourself need to die? so that you can move on. What old patterns, what behaviors, what worldviews, what yeah, perspectives on life, you need to purge and compost so that 
the new version of yourself and a new version of your life can um, grow. And I think it is also very um, interesting to look at the chart of the new moon because there is a water trine. A water trine between Mercury and I can show you the chart. Let's see, that's the full moon. So that is the new moon in Scorpio. It's on November 1st and it's in nine degrees Scorpio, 35 minutes. And I show you some aspects and then I dive deeper into the energy. So there is a grand water trine between Mercury in Scorpio, Neptune retrograde in Pisces and Mars in Cancer. Mars, the classic um, Hellenistic ruler of Scorpio is in opposition to Pluto. And we also say in evolutionary astrology that Mars is the lower octave of Pluto. Pluto is our soul desire and Mars is our conscious desire, our willpower. I'll talk more about that in a second. And I also want to point out that there is asteroid goddess Diana which is my favorite asteroid goddess, conjunct the new moon. And at this time of the new moon, we also have a, an opposition between Venus and Sagittarius and Jupiter retrograde in um, Gemini. Uh, but yeah, let's start with the this grand water trine. Um, I feel with this grand water trine energy that... Um, and also Pluto and Capricorn, that it is not only about old versions of yourself that um, wants to be purged or transformed, um, but also patterns and topics that are actually not yours, but that you have inherited or that you have taken over unconsciously from past lives if you look at it from an EA perspective and also from your ancestral lineage. And um, yeah, by, by learning so much about somatics and the nervous system, I also become more and more aware that trauma um, can be, um, yeah, that there is ancestral trauma, that things that you may be experience and feel in your own body stems actually not from your own experiences but is rooted in generations and generations before you and for me my um, family is in austria and germany and my father was born during world war ii so you can imagine especially if you have um relatives i, I can just speak for myself as a person who grew up in this area of the world, but so many of our grandparents or parents were born into an atmosphere of a world war, for example. Um, and also you can go back if you live in the United States, there is so much about colonialism, slavery, and so on. So maybe there are also certain fears and patterns and burden that are actually not yours, but that are still in your system. And there might be also beliefs um, and um, rules how you live that are not yours. So I give you an example. Um, there is a cert there, there is a very, very strict rule inside of my system in regard to discipline a very Capricorn topic, discipline, that when, when I really tune into that, so this working hard, um, just being allowed to, to receive if you have worked very, very hard for it. And I think that many of us can relate to that because on the one hand, it is collective. And on the other hand, it roots in my paternal lineage. I know that. And 
these are deeply ingrained. These are these beliefs are deeply ingrained in my system, but they are actually not mine. Or another one that is even more, um, even more, um, yeah, direct is um, there is a, a, a high degree of um, the fear of fear of not having enough in my system and. I was in the privileged position that I always had enough to survive. But I got to know that in my ancestry, in my family tree, um, there was a person, um, a relative that, so that was, or there were many relatives that experienced extreme lack. And so what I want to say is that often it's also important to become aware of what is actually not yours and to cleanse and to purge and to release that. And I think especially this water trine with Neptune, with Mercury, with Mars in these three water signs is so much about the release of old chains and patterns and layers. And the more you release these things that are actually not yours, you come closer to the ground of your soul. And with that, to your soul desires. And Pluto, the Pluto archetype and the Scorpio archetype are so much about our soul desires. As I said, Mars is about our conscious desires and our willpower, but Pluto is about our subconscious desires and our soul desires. And I want to invite you. And what do I mean with soul desires? It's really this deep longing that you have. These deep desires that you sometimes or often repress, that you are often ashamed of, and that you are often even ashamed of seeing them just for yourself. And what I love so much um, with evolutionary astrology that with evolutionary astrology, we learn that actually our Pluto desires are here for a reason. And I want to really invite you to reframe your desires. So what would be if your hunger is not too much and your desires are not something that you need to be ashamed of and that they are not evil, but they are divine. What if you have your deep desires for a reason? And what if they are the guide or the hint for your soul's evolution? Because, and I deeply feel that, I think that we have our desires for a reason. They are seated in our soul for a reason. And for what reason? In, so that we can evolve. So you might have certain desires so that you feel pulled towards to or that you desire, your soul desires to have certain experiences in order to evolve, to grow, to heal. And when you see it like that it is really about owning your desires and not repressing them and i really want to say that um diana asteroid goddess diana is conjunct the new moon in scorpio and i think that is so interesting because in the mythology you can actually see Diana behind me. I painted her. Um, and I have written a book about her, which is not yet published. So if you are a publisher, you can reach out. I have a full book about the astrological Diana. Um, Astrod goddess Diana is, amongst many things, the goddess of our wild and untamed nature. And in the mythology, in the classical Hellenistic mythology, 
Um, there is this story that, so Diana grew up um, just with her mother and her brother Apollo. And when she was three years old, she met her father. And her father was godfather Jupiter. So you can imagine little Diana going, meeting her daddy, which is the godfather, um, on Mount Olympus for the first time. And she just said what she wanted. So little three-year-old Diana said to Jupiter that she wanted a pack of hunting dogs and a short tunica so that she could run and um, a bow and an arrow and 20 nymphs as her friends and many other things. So Diana wanted a lot. <laughs> and Jupiter, her god, the godfather, was so impressed by the courage and that Diana owned her desires that he fulfilled all of her wishes immediately. So for me, this is such a beautiful story that owning your desires and speaking them out loud in front of yourself, in front of the universe and in front of others is magical and powerful. It's like a reclamation of your soul's desires. It's, it's really powerful. And I mean, I have in my kitchen, so that I can see it all the time, I have a, a list which has the caption, my divine desires. And I write down everything, no matter how big and no matter how unrealistic it is, that my soul really longs for. And I think that there are two things we can, we can see with that. I think that in the moment that we really speak our desires out loud and that especially if other people are involved, we say, we say what we desire and we say what we want. Um, we are often afraid and ashamed because we think that the other people the other person will reject us. But what I really learned in the book Unbound by Kesia Urbaniak is that um, she gives such a beautiful reframe of this situation because she says that um, in the moment that we really um, claim a need, we bring our counterpart in the position that they are capable of. So when I say, I want that you do this thing for me, I perceive the other person as capable of doing so. And actually, I give them a bigger role and I give them, um, in a way, power and I give them um, responsibility. So when you want something from somebody else, you actually put them into a position, into, in, into a higher or more important position. So they can even feel challenged in a good way to do that. And I think that's such a beautiful, beautiful um, shift in perspective, especially if you feel like, oh, I cannot, I'm, I'm afraid of saying what I want. And I think that there is another thing that, um, especially with um, Venus in Sagittarius in opposition to Jupiter, that points to this topic of, um, that I feel strongly in the field, being very, very honest to yourself and to others. So we are doing this relationship work with the Luna Notes and Aries and Libra since last year, since summer 2023. And I think that um, it's all about this, yeah, becoming more what you truly are. Um, we, we did last season was Libra season with um, the Aries full moon. And I think you felt 
more strongly what you really want on a conscious level. And now we are going deeper into this soul desire level and not only saying loud what you want and strengthen your I am, your Aries I am within your Libra relationships. Now we are getting even more intimate with ourselves and with others. And I really want to say that um, I think that you cannot avoid to trigger other people when you are honest. I think when you speak your truth, one of the byproducts of speaking your truth is that you hurt or activate or trigger others. And on the one hand, I think Venus and Sagittarius really teaches us that we can choose our words with awareness and that we can choose loving words to speak our truth. And on the other hand, we never know whom we will trigger because we never know what kind of wounding and trigger points another person has. And also, especially if you identify as somebody who is here to awaken others and humanity and to bring shifts in perspective and to bring more consciousness to the planet, like I do, I think it's part of the process to trigger people because not everyone wants to hear maybe uncomfortable truths. So there is something around this new moon to not be too irritated if people are looking at you or feel activated or feel triggered if you claim your desires. And if you maybe say them out loud. However, there's this question. If you now feel your deep desires, does that and and even if you if you yeah if you if you feel your deep desires because you have released many old patterns and layers, does that mean that it is possible to embody and to live them, and or does that mean that you need to follow them? And I think the answer is no. On the one hand, there are, and Jeffrey Wolf Green also, um, so the, the founder of, of evolutionary astrology, Jeffrey Wolf Green also says in his Pluto books, I think it's in Pluto volume one and maybe two too, um, that certain desires, and I especially um, bring that into, um, into connection with fears maybe, um, it's not about following them in an unconscious way. It's about bringing them to the surface of our awareness so that we can heal them or work with them in a conscious way. So, and this is very similar to what I learned with somatic experiencing. So listening to your body and understanding your body does not mean that you need to follow the impulses all the time. If your body is deeply traumatized, you might be in a fight flight response all the time. Does that mind mean that you have to follow these impulses all the time? No. You can work with these parts of you that are traumatized consciously. Or if I feel, um, yeah, I, I don't get a good example, but I think you know what I get. So understanding and listening to the body does not mean that you have to follow it, follow the impulses all the time. Um, maybe you, you, you have, you are in a rage because of a reason, but um, it's not about in this moment maybe punching your friend. 
you know? I know that you know that we are not doing that. Um, on the other hand, it's maybe very, very important to notice and to not repress your rage and to maybe go to a somatic experiencing practitioner and learn how to how you can act out this rage without harming yourself or others. And the same thing with desires. Maybe you, re you recognize that you have this desire that would actually, if you are just acting it out, it would hurt yourself or others, or that it is against your values or your morality. And then it is not about doing it. It's about looking at it with consciousness and maybe with professional help with a therapist and so on. So that does, but, but that also means that it's important to look at your desires and to see them as a hint for evolution, because then it is a hint that there, you, that some healing work needs to be done. Um, and also, and now we are diving into the full moon and Taurus. So Taurus, the opposite sign of Scorpio. Scorpio, all about transformation, evolution, soul desires, um, change, death and rebirth. And Taurus, the polar opposite sign, the polar sign, um, all about security and safety and staying in a zone that keeps us warm and cozy and where we have food, shelter and rest and enjoying life and receiving and experiencing pleasure. And I think that especially with the full moon and, and Taurus, you might feel that your desires are a little bit against your capacity. So in Taurus, you become aware, it's, it, it's a nerve sign that you are in a body. And I really relate Taurus to the nervous system. The nervous system wants to keep us safe. And sometimes we even stay in a situation that is actually not um, supporting our growth and our evolution, but we are staying in the situation because for our nervous system, it's the noun. So our nervous system does everything to keep us in the noun because the noun is in a way safe, even though the situation is not good for our growth or even harmful. And the same thing we do relate to Taurus. Taurus on the shadow side stays in the comfort zone because it is safe and noun and does not want to transform. So there is, I show you the chart, there is um, a very, very revolutionary, <laughs> revolutionary and transformative energy around this Taurus moon. Mm, you see it is conjunct Uranus and it is trine Pluto. And Pluto will move just a couple of days after the full moon happens into Aquarius. So there is this very explosive energy to this very grounded full moon in Taurus. Um, and I think that there is something around the question, okay, where is it really, really important that you release or that you um, that you are not holding on to certain security and safety patterns if they are not um, supporting your growth? And also, and also, the full moon is also in a trine to Ceres in Capricorn. And I think that yes to transformation and change. I said at the beginning of the video, the time for change is now. And also we need 
a certain degree of security so that we are able to change and evolve and transform without overwhelming our system and then falling back into the old pattern. So that is something that if you are deeply into evolutionary astrology, I feel this also with when we have planets firing the lunar node. So if you are going too fast into evolution, then you are falling back because you skipped a step. So there's something, something around this full moon and for the whole Scorpio season, because Taurus is the opposite sign, just illuminated at the moment of the full moon, around what sort of security do you need so that you can transform in a sustainable way and so that you don't fall back into old patterns. And I think on the one hand, we are all strong enough to take the leap, Uranus and Pluto, but can you take the leap in your own pace? And can you nurture yourself on the way series? And I, for example, um, I have my son in Taurus and Pluto, I'm Pluto in Scorpio generation. Um, and I often experience this, um, I have Pluto in the fifth house. So there's these, these creative projects that want to be created through me and that I want to bring out into the world and I feel this strong desire to create. And um, there is this really this obsession with my projects. And then my body, Taurus, is just saying no. My body and, and I need to, I have to realize that I have not the somatic capacity for doing all of these things and or I have not enough time and energy or money to do that. So there can be this, this balance that you need to find during Scorpio season between your desires, Scorpio, and your capacity. And maybe it is not a no in general to your desires, but maybe it is a not yet. Or maybe it is something that you first need to cultivate more security inside of yourself before you can move into this new direction. So it's about maybe cultivating inner safety, inner security, the ability to stay grounded so that you then can make the change. And I also have the feeling that there is this topic in the field of um, cultivating self-trust and self-authority in the midst of change. So Venus is the ruler of Taurus and she is, during the full moon, she is squaring the lunar nodes. And she already squared the lunar nodes um, in summer, I think it was in June. Then she squared it from Cancer. And you can reflect upon this time, what you learned at that time in regard to relationships. And I think it's very important to mention that the resolution node of Venus and Capricorn squaring the lunar nodes in Aries and Libra is the south node in Libra. And there is also Vesta conjunct the south node. And Vesta is the priestess energy, and she's all about really tending to your own inner flame, nurturing your inner flame, um, finding a balance, especially in Libra, between being with others and in service and being with yourself and hold on to yourself. And I think that there is something around Venus squaring the lunar nodes around this Taurus um, full moon. Um, that there is this message or what, what I felt is that you need to finally find and have your own back instead of fulfilling expectations. So that there is something about rooting into your self-worth, Taurus, Venus, and rooting into your self-trust and your self-sovereignty and your self-authority 
so that you are not doing the Libra thing in a shadowy side. And we worked with that for the last couple of months so that you really feel, ah, yeah, that's an, an integrity with my heart. That an, is an integrity with my own values. That's an alignment. And I feel that I'm having a strong back and I'm not here to fulfill expectations. And I'm not here to um, pressure myself into something. So I can really make sustainable changes for me and my life and the world and move into my airy self led by my soul desires in a way that is sustainable and serves me and the others and my loved ones and the world over time. So the last, so there is this topic about um, being aware of your resources, Taurus, and your desires, and how can you balance them. And I also want to mention la one last topic that I feel with the full moon in Taurus, um, that there is in Taurus, so Scorpio is about these desires, and Taurus is about your resources and what you already have. And in somatic experiencing, one of the mm, basic, basic practices is pendulation. And that means that you are doing what your nervous system is doing in, in a healthy way. You pendulate between different, different parts of your body, different sensations, different feelings, and often some, something between a part of your body that feels fear and a part of your body that feels safety. And I think that with Scorpio and Taurus, there's this beautiful pendulation between what you desire and what you want on the one hand and what you already have on the other hand. And I think this is also the ground for every manifestation work that we want to do. When you dive deeper and dig deeper into manifestation work, it's always, on the one hand, claiming to the universe what you want, and on the other hand, feeling what you already have, and that everything is already here, and that you are already in abundance. And so I invite you, maybe you want to try that, in which part of your body you feel your desire and which part of your body you feel what you already have and you can pendulate between both and then see what shifts maybe. Um, and it's also this pendulation between um, your hunger for more and the abundance that is already here. And this is something my son again, is in Taurus, and I had these huge um, Uranus activations over my Taurus sun in the last months and almost one and a half years. And I, I'm very, yeah, I, I reflect and work a lot with the topic of abundance. And one thing that my spirit guides told me is, and what I feel so deeply when I tune into my true self, um, is that my nature is abundance. Our nature is abundance. Abundance is the natural way how life works on planet Earth. There is enough for everyone. But this is unfortunately not our reality right now. It is the truth, but it is not the reality. So and. I'm pretty sure that if you tune into your most authentic self, that you feel that abundance is natural, that you there is already everything that you need, and there is enough in the universe is enough. There's enough of everything. But is that our reality? No, it's not. Because we live in systems established thousands of years ago that are based 
on lack and scarcity and that hold us in a scarcity mi a mindset in lack and in fear. Why? Because then we are not powerful. Because then we are not in the position of power. So very interesting how the, um, the topic of power and lack, Scorpio and Taurus, can play out in a very, very um, dysregulated and um, destructive way. So I really want, I don't want to bypass your current situation and I don't want to bypass that there are thousands of people on the planet that where, where a feeling of abundance is completely out of reach. And I know that I live in the privileged situation that I have food and shelter. And also I want to invite you to connect from time to time with this feeling of divine abundance and to find more trust in that and to see what you have, even though it is might be not what you everything what you want to have, but you have something. You have at least a device where you can watch this video from. So and I'm not I'm really not want to step into toxic gratitude but i want to step into gratitude and a healthy taurus energy and the ability to sit with the both and sit with your desire and what you really long for and what you maybe also need really need and on the other hand what you already have and this deep knowing that abundance is natural and that the lack and the fear is maybe even not yours, but it's the product of a system that wants to keep us small. And yeah, I think I, I'll end with that. Um, the pressure to transform and also the need for certain amounts of security so that you can do that um, the invitation to really connect with your deep soul desires and release old karmic yeah chains um, do a lot of energetic clearing i think it would be very very helpful to do a lot of um, energy clearing in the next months uh, in the next weeks um yeah, be kind to yourself and others, um, especially in these intense times. And also the optimistic view that maybe things are getting a little bit, that there will be more forward movement when Pluto moves into Aquarius at the end of Scorpio season and the sun moves into Sagittarius. And the invitation to be radically honest with yourself and if you have the capacity for that with others too. Um, yeah, I want to invite you to download my free gift. I have a free Astro Archetypes mini guide. It's a beautifully designed um, PDF guide, which gives you a very short description of all of the 12 astrological archetypes from Aries to Pisces with not only some um, words about the topics of each archetype, but also of the evolutionary intent. So what wants to be evolved with this archetype? And you can download the free um, Astro Archetype mini guide in, Eng in English language or in German language. So if you click on the link below the video, please don't forget to choose your favorite language. And I also want to invite you to a new offering or my upcoming of offering. It's my eight weeks course, Transits for Evolution. And if you feel empowered by watching these videos because they give you more clarity and trust, 
regarding what is going on in your own life and in the world, then the course is for you. In Transits for Evolution, you learn to really unlock the transit's potential for evolution and for growth. And we do that in a way that really bridges your lived experience and astral theory. So we don't only um, analyze transit charts, because this is, if you ask me, not enough to understand transits on an, in, on an embodied and deep level. We not only analyze transit charts, but we also observe how certain transits play out in our life, our lived experience, our emotional body, our surroundings, and we mix astrology and the lived experience. We bridge or we mix also or we combine also um, astrology, evolutionary astrology with somatic experiencing. So you get somatic practices to even feel a certain energy more and to deal with a certain energy in a more conscious way. You get journaling prompts from me to yeah, to sharpen your archetypal and transit eye. Um, and yeah, it's an eight weeks course. So we have live classes, we meet each week and we look each week at one transit, our transit of the week. And then we analyze the chart we experience how the transit plays out in our life over the week and then we come together, share our experiences, look at charts again, and then we you make these connections between, ah, okay, that is the theoretical um, or the prediction of the energy and that is how it really plays out. And by that, you gain such a deep and embodied and integrated understanding of transits so that you then can use transits for your personal life and especially if you work with other people with, for your clients as guides, as keys. And by doing that, you really, transits can show you um, what energies are in the field and you can consciously choose how you want to co-create. And as I said in the beginning, my mission is to bring consciousness, to bring light to my life, your life, planet Earth. And working with transits is a way how you can live in a more conscious way and also gain new expansive perspectives. So because everything has so many facets. So you can live certain energies that are reflected by the transits um, in very different ways. And if you are aware of them, you can choose with awareness and with consciousness how you really want to co-create and interact with energy circumstances in your life and in the world. So transits for evolution is a powerful journey. It's a transformative journey. You need some basic astral knowledge for that. But um, yeah, don't hesitate to check out all of the details um, on the enrollment page. The course starts on November 14th. And I forgot to mention that we don't have just, we not only have regular live, trend, uh, live classes, we also have three transit ceremonies where we meet at the time when a certain transit is happening and we have together an embodied experience. One, one transit ceremony, we have a cacao ceremony where we connect, where we drink ceremonial cacao and tune with a guided meditation by a beautiful guest mentor, Naomi, um, into the energy that is in the field. Then we have another transit ceremony with uh, my friend, artist Melissa McConnell, and we have an intuitive, intuitive painting class while a certain transit is happening so that you can really feel into the energy and express it on the paper. Um, and then we have a sound and movement session with um, gifted Marlene Zöbel, where you really feel the energy with your body and can directly express it through your body. So if that sounds juicy and interesting for you, 
I'm looking forward to teach the course and to learn together with you from the transits to yeah gain even more consciousness and integrated knowledge about transits so that I, together with you, can rise and expand consciousness. Um, the course starts on November 14th and um, you can enroll now. Um, all um, information, you find all information on the enrollment page. And if you have any questions, you can reach out to me via my homepage. Um, you find my um, contact there. And yeah, everything is in the video description. And I now say thank you for watching the video. Feel free to share the video. Feel free to, um, yeah, if you are watching it on my Verena Borel astrology channel, subscribe to my channel. Um, thank you for watching and have a transformative and also expansive and also joyful Taurus um, Scorpio season. Take care.